Hi, welcome to another video. So, Klein has recently gotten very good with some new upgrades, and I thought I'd cover them and also tell you about the new free APIs that I have been using, and everything like that. Let me just tell you about the upgrades, and then we'll jump right into them. I had covered the upgrades up to Klein 3.8 in my last video. So, the new upgrades start from here. The next ones were minor upgrades after the last video. First, we got support for remote MCP servers using server-side events, which is great as some MCP servers didn't work well sometimes. There's also access to history, MCP, and new task buttons in pop-out view, and it also has an updated requesty UX for model selection, which means that it now allows you to search for model names within it. This is great because you don't need to copy and paste model names anymore and things like that. It also has a new UI for adding remote servers. There's also a new tab for configuring local MCP servers, which is kind of awesome. And we also got some bug fixes for DeepSeek API provider token counting and context management. There's also now some models marked as recommended in the client provider option which is kind of great. It has also got a new ability to detect when users edit files manually, so Klein knows to reread, leading to reduced diff edit errors, which is kind of cool. It also got improvements to file mention, searching for faster searching, as well as scoring logic to file mentions to sort and exclude results based on relevance and support for ByteDance Dubao. Then came another major release that allows you to use your local Chrome browser for session-based browsing, enabling debugging and productivity workflows tied to your actual browser state. It also has an added modal in the chat area to more easily enable or disable MCP servers, along with a new auto-approve option to approve all commands. They have also made context shortening more intelligent. When the model hits the context window, now old file contents are removed from conversation history rather than the first half of messages being removed altogether, resulting in narrative integrity and fewer loop issues. You can also now drag and drop files or folders into ClineChat. It also now supports prompt catching for Light LLM and Claude. They have also added CMD and quote keyboard shortcut to add selected text to Klein. There's also the new Create New Task tool to let Klein start a new task autonomously. Another thing that has now changed is the Checkpoints feature. So, they have redesigned the Checkpoints feature. They say that checkpoints are now created more often throughout the task and will appear as line indicators on the left edge of chat. Hover over them to expand and see details like when they were created. It also has added support for Grok, three models. Then came another major release that added favorite toggles for models when using the Klein and Open Router providers. There's also some more stuff like auto approve options for edits or reads outside of the workspace, an indicator showing the number of diff edits when Klein edits a file streaming support and reasoning effort option for Grok 3 Mini, and a settings button to the MCP popover to easily modify installed servers. Then came another major upgrade that added the Klein rules popover under the chat field, allowing you to easily add, enable, and disable workspace level or global rule files. Basically, you can now add global rules for Klein to reference in all your projects, and you can add that manually via the graphical interface along with the workspace rules option, which is kind of cool. There's also a new slash command menu letting you type slash to do quick actions like creating new tasks, which is kind of cool. Another thing that I liked a lot is the ability to edit past messages with options to restore your workspace back to that point. It is really great as it allows you to edit the responses to be better. 
and that will allow you to influence the next responses, which is kind of cool. It also allows sending a message when selecting an option provided by the question or plan tool. These are the major upgrades. Now let me show you these upgrades in action, and then I'll also show you which free APIs and MCP servers I've been using with it as well. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Photogenius AI. Photogenius AI is an all-in-one AI-powered art generator that allows you to type anything and get stunning visuals instantly. It gives you all kinds of image generation, video generation, and even 3D model generation models in one place, whether it be Flux, Stable Diffusion, Google's Image Gen, or VO2 Video Gen model, or even Kling, or any image or video generator model that you can think of. You can just type in your prompt for a video or image and get it generated in literal seconds. You can also generate 3D model generations with it in literal seconds as well. Not just that, it also gives you the option to do advanced AI image editing as well with their cool AI tools like an AI avatar generator, background removal, logo generator, emoji generator, YouTube thumbnail generator, or even add an app icon generator. And the best part is that it starts at only $10 and you can get an additional 25% off these already great deals by using my coupon code KING25. So make sure that you check out photogenius.ai through the link in the description and generate some cool stuff with it. Now back to the video. First of all, make sure that you upgrade Klein to the latest version. Now, Let's start with the message editing feature. So, if you click on any of the messages that you have sent, then it will just make it editable, and you can change it here, and then save it. What it will do is update it for the further context, or you can also restore the workspace to this point with the new checkpoints feature, and then it will allow you to just send in the new edited message accordingly. Apart from this, another option that you will see is that at the bottom, you get this icon, which if you click, then you'll get the option to set global rules file and workspace rule file. This means that you now don't need to always have a Klein rules file. You can set whatever you want accordingly and then use that, which is kind of cool. It also now supports global rules, which are usable in any project that you open, which is also kind of cool. So. This is great for rule definition. Another option is that if I go to the prompt box and then write a slash, then we now get a new option called New Task. You can select this and enter the new task that you want to do, and it will take the context of this chat and then start the new task for you, which is kind of cool because it allows you to just tell it that this is a new task and things like that, which is kind of cool. Another option is that if you're a shortcut user, then you can now open up the command palette and just type in jump to client chat input, and it will just focus the client chat interface and the prompt box, and you can then use it accordingly, which is kind of cool. Another thing is that it now shows you the number of diffs that it has proposed, which is good to see as well. Then, we also got the favorite model option, which means that you can go to the settings. And if you use the Klein or Open Router option, then it will allow you to favorite the model with a star option, which is great. Also, if you select the Grok 3 Mini, then you can set the reasoning effort now as well, which is kind of great. Another thing is that if you select a chunk of code, then you can add that easily in Klein Chat by hitting command and single quote button, and it will be added, which is kind of cool. Next, if we go to the settings, then here you can see a new connection option that allows you to connect your local browser and allow it to do feature testing and research via your own browser, which is kind of cool for sure. You'll need to start the browser in debugging mode and then connect it here with the port accordingly. Another option is that in the MCP servers, you'll see the option to add remote servers directly via a graphical interface, which is kind of cool. Then here, you also have the option to turn on and off MCP servers and see all of them in a good way here, which is kind of great. 
You can also now drag and drop files in the Klein chat as well, and it will reference that accordingly in the prompt. These are the major upgrades. But now, let's talk about the MCP servers and the models that I'm using. So, I have been using the Gemini 2.5 Flash Free API for major stuff because it's actually really good, and it works just so well for most tasks, and it's really amazing for those things, and it's free, which is kind of amazing. Another thing that I also use is the DeepSeek models, especially the new V3 model that is amazing to use at the price. It's so good at front-end and coding in general and cheaper than DeepSeek while performing better. So, I use that as well. You can use it for free via Sambanova, which makes it super fast, and you also get a $5 free credit there, which is awesome. I also use Gemini 2.5 Pro for more complex tasks. I have moved away from Claude now for a while, and I don't think I'll go back until a new, better variant of theirs comes out. And for the price, it's just unjustified as of now. I also don't use any of the OpenAI models as well. I do sometimes use the local Phi 4 models for some basic chat when I don't have internet access or something like that. So, there's that. For the MCP servers, I use these ones. There's the fetch tool that basically just allows it to scrape a URL. I have stopped using sequential think because it isn't as useful anymore. Kubernetes is something I use in just my daily workflow. Serper is something that I use for web searches. And Dart is also something that I use as well for most of the task management stuff. That's mainly what I use. So, I just thought to tell you guys about the new upgrades and you can go ahead and try out these new features as well. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!